you know, it's funny because this this is packaged really as a documentary about Norma, but I do think it is just as much a documentary about the religious right. And I think it's important to note, like, <laughs> I, I've talked to you about this, but I don't think I've said this on the podcast. Evangelicals, Protestant evangelicals were not against Roe v. Wade. Yeah, let's talk about that because that is something I had no fucking idea was a thing. <laughs> the Southern Baptist Convention, they actually said they released a statement when Roe v. Wade was passed. And it was not as uh, negative as you would think. When Roe v. Wade came out, the vast majority of uh, evangelical Christians said nothing about it. Um, to be completely honest, at the time, the religious right was not as activated as they are today. And so they mm -hmm. really didn't care about politics. They viewed that like, you know, leave unto Caesar what is Caesar's. They really just viewed themselves yeah. as separate from it. Um, however, there is a particular... <laughs> Uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, the biggest evangelical organization in the U.S., ran an op-ed just after Roe and said, quote, religious liberty, human equality, and justice are advanced by the Supreme Court abortion decision. Sorry? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about, Michael? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> the Southern Baptist Convention viewed Roe as a good decision against human equality. I'm crying right now because <laughs> I'm so, uh, like, astonished and frustrated by um, this. <laughs> and a... How is this possible? A prominent Southern Baptist, Linda Coffey, you may recognize her, as one of the attorneys who argued and represented Roe. Yeah. She was one of these she people. She was one of these people. She said, the ruling does not relieve each individual of standing firmly behind his or her moral or religious viewpoint about what a person is or when life begins. Uh, and she, yeah. And the whole argument. So here's the thing southern baptist and like christianity actually has a long history of saying life begins at birth i've literally never heard that michael what the fuck are you talking so, about yes, that's not be life begins at conception <laughs> everyone knows that well, here's the thing a lot of christians took the passage in the bible i've known you since you took your first breath to mean that you do not gain a soul until you're born <laughs> I, I broke Aaron, everyone. I've broken Aaron. I'm so mad. I'm so angry because it's just this is a this is a narrative that's been fed to me for my whole fucking yep. life. <laughs> like that Southern Southern Baptists are like Catholics, you know, completely solid in their defense of life beginning at conception and, you know, making sure that the the we we must protect, you know, the lives of the unborn, which which begin immediately, um, and just to hear that <laughs> that there was a time in America where you know there there was a split in Christianity and and it wasn't all fucking nightmare people being like, hey, uh, <laughs> life life actually doesn't begin at conception. So here's the here's the kicker: it wasn't until six years after Roe was decided that the religious right decided to mobilize on this. That's a long time. <laughs> Six years. So the Supreme Court decided it, and basically, like, every day, like, standard, uh, like, evangelicals were like, no skin off our back, we view that as a Catholic thing. Like, that's their thing. <laughs> that's their dumb shit, yeah. And uh, so what happened is, like, a few very loud extremists decided... Um, in particular, uh, Paul Weyrich, um, he decided that he was going to weaponize and uh, galvanize the uh, like abortion issue and make it a wedge issue. 
because he viewed that there were a lot of people that could go and show up and vote for conservative candidates. However, his goal was not overturning Roe. The goal was continuing segregation, and they thought that that was too unbearable. Oh, God damn it! We can't not be racist for one minute! <laughs> no, we can't. No, we can't. Um, I hate this fucking country! <laughs> the choice movement owes itself to a pro-segregation movement. God damn it, Michael! <laughs> I don't know if I'm genuinely <laughs> crying or not. <laughs> I'm I mean, so frustrated. <laughs> God damn them. I hate them so much. Yeah. Oh my the, God. The entire, <laughs> the entire anti-choice movement is a, a Trojan horse for a pro-segregation movement. And what they did is they... <laughs> They actually marketed <laughs> really intelligently. So there's this like disgusting. Um, I'll have to send you a couple of videos that like explain this more in depth. It's heartbreaking and angering. And so they made like propaganda films showing like people wandering in fields with a bunch of graves and then like a bunch of kids dressed in white, supposed to be kids that could have grown up and make emotional appeals. And uh, the whole purpose was. If we can get people angry about this and then get our candidates to talk about it and um, something notable, a uh, Republican nominee for president in 1980 was a pretty pro-choice governor and actually signed a lot of very pro-choice laws and then was advised by uh, very conservative people to take on the pro-life anti-choice mantle to galvanize people. By name of uh, Ronald Reagan. Yep. Have you heard of him? Of course it was. <laughs> oh, those bastards. <laughs> I hate them so much. I hate them so much, Michael. 